Hey, I'm Pat, and in this video, I am going to be going over using tables as a method of managing the data inside of your game. You know, this is a video I kind of wanted to make for a while because uh, I talk a lot about not using instance values and telling people to use tables instead, and then people get confused as to how you're supposed to use a table instead of instance values because it doesn't make any sense to them. So. Uh, I think like the way most beginner scripters uh, do things like manage data is they'll use instance values and what I mean by instance values is I mean things like this uh, an int value, a bool value, these are instances that are just values and they just have a single property to store data inside of them and you can access them through any script right so uh, these uh, these are okay, right? They're, you know, they're whatever. Uh, every time the player joins the game, you're gonna have to create a bunch of instance values to represent all their data. Um, and then, or actually, once they join the game, you're gonna have to get their data and then convert their data from a table into all the instance values and make a ton of instance values every time they join. And then once they leave, you gotta convert all these instance values to to a table and then save the table. Uh, you can also use like things like attributes too. Uh, I like attributes, but I don't use them for like managing uh, a player's data. Uh, I think they have good use cases, but that I wouldn't think is one of them. Instance values also are going to take up slightly more memory since they're technically a whole instance. So they're going to have, I mean, obviously they don't have a ton of properties, but uh, they're going to take up more data than, say, just a string inside of a table or just a number inside of a table because they have to uh, manage their archivable, so that's going to be boolean, class name, uh, name, that's a string, parent, that's a instance, uh, reference, and then value, which is a number. So it's going to have to store all the data instead of a table where you can control how much data you want to take up with each uh, piece of information. So I'm going to go over how you can use tables in your game to uh, store players data. Uh, I'm not going to go over saving. Uh, I have a data store video and I might go over profile service soon, which is a really uh, great way of working with tables and data because profile service works like perfectly with it. But the first, what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to make a leveling system using just like a basic way of using tables uh, for managing data. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can use object-oriented programming which is what I like to do with tables and uh, that can create a very uh, in-depth way of like handling data. Very powerful and there's a lot of things that you can do with that. But I'm just going to show you a simple way with module scripts and tables and normal scripts. Nothing too complicated. So I'm going to make a GUI also. And uh, this will show us our level. I'm not going to go like crazy with that. I'm just going to leave it as normal. So our base level is going to be 0. And we're going to have a server script inside of server script service. This is going to be our uh, setup script for when the player joins. So. We'll just call this uh, level setup and we can make even like a folder called like player stats and we can go ahead and nest our server script inside of the player stats folder and this is just gonna be a simple script where when the player joins we'll create a new table for that player to represent all their data which in this case is just gonna have like three indexes for the uh, the level information. So we're going to get players and it's really all we need. Oh yeah, we're going to need a module script for storing all of our players data. Now we can put that like right here, but the thing is this module script, we're going to need to be able to access this pretty easily uh, across the server. So uh, we can play it in a place like server storage, which is also a decent place, or we can just leave it in player stats because it kind of falls under player stats, but I'll put it in server storage. So now I'm gonna also need to get server storage. Uh, 
get some server storage. All right, so we're gonna need server storage as well. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a reference to our module script, which will store our player's data. We'll just call this uh, level storage, I guess. Now, usually I would have one table to represent like their entire data. So this would just have, like each player would have their own table and inside that table would have different sub tables maybe. So like we would have like their main table and then with that main table, we would have like, you know, their level table inside, which has like their current level, their max XP and their current XP, like the XP required, their current XP and their current level, whatever. But yeah, I mean, we're just doing levels, so it doesn't matter so much. So, so we'll go ahead and require our script from storage, uh, level storage. And now what we'll do is we'll listen for when a player joins the game. If I can type uh, player added connect function, player. And now whenever a player joins the game, we'll go ahead and call this function, right? And we'll just make a new table. And in this table, we're gonna have three elements. Our first one's gonna be their current level, which is gonna be zero at the start. And then their uh, current XP, or we can just call this XP, it doesn't matter, equals zero. And then XP needed equals 100. So, these are three elements, so each set here would be like an element. So we got a key, which is the level, and then the value, which is zero. And that together makes an element inside of our table. So we got three elements here. Uh, that's pretty much it. And now all we gotta do is associate this table with our player and store that in this uh, module script somehow. Now this module script is obviously just going to be a table in this case so it makes it pretty easy and simple. So now what we got to do is we got to get our table or our module script. We're going to create a new index inside of it which is just going to be our player. So that will reference our player's instance. So we can just index the table with our player and easily get their level data. Now all we got to do is set this to our new table that we just created and there we go now we have a table inside of our module script which will represent our player's level that we can access across the server and manipulate it however we want very easily so now what we're going to do is players that player removing connect function player now this is also kind of important whenever the player leaves the game they're still going to have their own index inside of this table but that's going to be taking up memory that we don't need anymore. Since the player left the game, we don't need them to have their own table inside of our level storage. Or not a level storage, level storage. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to remove their uh, key or their data from the table. And all we got to do is just set their index to nil. And now automatically remove it from the there and clean up the table that we don't need anymore. So now what you're probably uh, questioning is, yeah, we got the data, it's all stored on the server now, but how do we access it from the client? So the th another kind of positive about doing data management this way is an exploiter can't see how your data structure for each player is set up. So it makes it kind of harder for them to uh, exploit your game and like figure out how your game works when they can't see how data is handled and stored and how things are being read things like that it makes it a little bit more difficult it's not like a huge plus but it definitely helps to prevent them from reverse engineering your game but something I like to do which makes it really easy is I'll usually have a module script now if I'm doing object oriented programming I would uh, actually make this table an object and then give this object like different methods to modify like the level inside of it so like we can add XP to our object by just calling add xp from our object whatever but in this case we're just going to go simple with some functions no object oriented programming we don't even need any of that uh, module that add xp and now what we're going to do is we're going to create a function called add xp so whenever xp is added to our player we'll call this function 
instead of just manually updating the table which isn't exactly uh, ideal because if you modify it through here now what you can do is after you add the new XP you can check to see if they're over the XP needed and if they are you can reset their current XP and add a level and then once you add a level you can tell the client hey the player leveled up you got to update their uh, GUI to show them that they're a new level now or whenever they add XP you gotta make the XP bar bigger or whatever right so what we're gonna need in order to do something like this is we're gonna need the player's name and we're also going to need how much XP the player wants to add to them that's really all we need or not the player but how much XP we want to give them then what we're gonna need to do is also going to need to get the uh, the level storage module Alright, so we got our level storage, and now all we need to do is get our player's uh, table inside the level storage by accessing it with our player, just like that, the same way that we did it inside this script, right? We created a key for the, with the player. Now this will give us the player's table, and now what we can do is to get uh, player.currentXP plus equals XP and then what we can do is we can just check to see if their current XP is over the needed XP I'm just gonna set the zero. I'm not gonna like conserve XP here, but you can do that just with like some simple subtraction. It's not exactly needed here. And we'll use a modifier of 1.1, and then what we'll do is increase the level by one. Now another benefit of doing it like this is say if the player, we want to give the player um, an XP modifier like maybe a game pass that gives them two times XP or like they complete a quest and they get like times four XP for like 20 seconds or something what we can do is we can add like another thing here like XP modifier or equals one or something and then if they have a game pass we can increase this to two or if they do something in the game we can put it to three or something and then in here what we can do is something like this we can take their uh, you can see right here is where we increase how much XP, or actually, no, that's wrong. I'm like completely farting. Right here is where we increment how much XP we give. So what we can do, instead of just giving them their baseline XP, we can take the uh, level storage. You can get their key and access their own personal XP modifier, right? And we can multiply how much XP they're getting by their personal XP modifier just like that and we don't have to go into like each script where we increase their level or their XP we can just uh, change their XP modifier and every time that we call this function it'll automatically implement our modifier now all we gotta do is tell the client that we updated their level when they level up so we'll just create a remote called level up now in most cases you're going to want to have a folder here for like remotes so I'll go ahead and do that just to show you like some decent game structure and I'm going to go ahead and get replicated storage up here now all we got to do is replicated storage.remotes.level up and this actually should be inside of our if statement because we're only going to fire it if we level up since we're only displaying the level, we're not showing their XP bar in this case. But you know, if you're showing their XP bar, obviously you're gonna need to uh, fire to the client each time and give them their current XP and maybe their level. You can possibly just pass the whole table, but if you only give them their current XP and their level, that's less elements that the exporter can like see as far as how your data is structured. So now we're going to fire it to the player and we're also going to give them their current level. So we're going to go ahead and get their current level. Now obviously you can make a variable for this and modify that. It wouldn't be indirect change since uh, tables are referenced. 
So you'd be storing the table, the reference to the table inside of a variable instead of like the actual table since you can't really get a direct access to the table you can only store the reference to the table so you can store a variable like that if you want to if that's confusing don't worry about it, it doesn't really matter so we're going to tell the client hey you leveled up and here's the new player's level so now all we got to do is make a local script I'll just call this uh, level label and we'll just call this level display and this module script is also going to be to be called something. Well, we'll just call this uh, level handler or something like that. And now, uh, inside of our uh, level display, what we'll go ahead and do is get replicate storage dot remotes dot level up. Now, I should probably make a remote for rep or a variable for replicated storage, but I kind of I'm getting lazy, not gonna lie. So it doesn't matter too much. Now on the client, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take in the, uh, the level that we're passing to the client. So we'll just call this new level. Then all we got to do is script that parent dot level label dot text equals level new level. Boom. Easy. Now all we got to do is call this function from this module script every time we want to give the player XP and it will automatically handle leveling up it will shut display on the client and everything you can even have like you know like your own little animation play on the client every time you level up or whatever so what I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to make a uh, simple part that gives us um, some XP every time we click it so I'll go ahead and get a click detector put a script in this XP giver whatever Local level handler equals require and get service uh, server script service not major stats level handler. Obviously, I sh could use some variables here, but I'm just gonna I'm just making a quick reference, so uh, it's not gonna be the cleanest, obviously. Yeah. Mouse click, I think that's it, right? And now the mouse click function automatically gives us the player that get, clicks it, so it makes it really easy for us to just go ahead and get our level handler. And then we can just call the dot add XP function. You can see the IntelliSense even tells us what to give it. So we know that we need to give it the player, we need to give it how much XP we want to add. So we'll go ahead and give it our player, and we'll just do with 25 XP, a uh, normal number, nothing like crazy. Now, once I play the game, no errors, that's good, first try. Uh, click this four times, I should level up, there you go, level one. Go ahead and click this five times, I should get up to level two. You can hear, you know, I keep picking it, and you can see it takes more and more clicks because I got like, I multiply the XP needed for each level by 1.1, that's like our experience multiplier for each level to make it like more and more difficult, I guess. So that's how you make like a really basic level system, just using tables. I didn't use a single instance value, I didn't use attributes, nothing. And now it's super easy to just take the table and save it to a data store. You don't have to convert anything, just save the table to a data store when the player leaves. Very easy, uh, nothing complicated. I just tell the client every time we level up and yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, we don't have to use a dot changed event or nothing, it's just a remote event. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully it helped you understand tables and managing data a little bit better. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I encourage you to try messing around with module scripts and tables. If you don't know how module scripts work or whatever, you can check out my module script video. But it's really just basically a table that it can be accessed from anywhere. I didn't really talk about that earlier, but it's no big deal. Anyways, thanks for watching.